So as you guys saw, Kyrie Irving, he was burning the sage before his game against the Boston Celtics. And there's a reason why he was burning the sage before the Boston Celtics. And we know, you know, maybe some of you guys know that burning sage is basically used as a form of, you know, boosting wisdom, increasing knowledge, as well as fighting off diseases and negative energy. And, you know, it just helps with healing, I guess, in regards to the understanding in which why they do it as far as, you know, the people that utilize that practice and that ritual. And we burn incense in regards to, you know, us who believe in the Most High, Yahweh, we burn incense for the Heavenly Father. You know, it goes into burning incense when you read Exodus and so on. But let me just read up on this. The origins and history of smudging. People commonly credit smudging as being a Native American practice, but the use of rising smoke and spiritual rituals has been practiced across many cultures for thousands of years. The ancient Hindu texts reveal this was practiced 6,000 years ago with the burning of incense. Smoke purification was performed in Egypt with the burning of aromatic resins for religious ceremonies. And I think sage is referred to as salvia officinalis or something like that. I forget how you pronounce it, but I think that's what it's, um, what it's referred to as. It was practiced in Babylonia, Greece, Rome, Japan, Tibet, China, among the ancient Hebrews and among indigenous tribal cultures around the world. With the native tribes of North America being only a portion, Catholic and Orthodox Christianity, which are an amalgamum or amalgamation of pagan beliefs and practices, use incense and religious ceremonies adapted from the pagan rituals popular when the Christian theocracy was legalized by the pagan turned Christian Roman Emperor Constantine in 325 AD. And yes, Constantine, he was a so-called black man. He was an Israelite. They started that during the amalgamation period in which you utilize the pagan teachings with the righteous teachings. So that this is correct. So as you see here, this is the Boston Celtics logo, obviously, you guys know. And the Boston Celtics logo was supposed to represent Loki, the god of mischief. Now, Loki is just Horus. It's just a composite of Horus. If you understand, you know, what this imagery is giving off in regards to the right eye being exposed, the sun or the basketball on the right side spinning on the finger, the fingertip of the leprechaun, a.k.a. Horus or Loki, the as above, so below energy being given off, the Baphometic energy, understanding that this is supposed to represent Horus and also the vegetative state with the green. Now, I did a video on Drake where he was depicted as Horus the child. He was in his vegetative state, his vegetation state, where you saw him in the woods and you seen the light hovering over him so he can be enlightened and him climb up that ladder to heaven, quote unquote. That's what that's supposed to represent. And this right here is supposed to represent the vegetation state with the green. Also to understand that, like I said, that this is supposed to represent Horus or Loki, the god of mischief, because you know what the leprechaun is about, mischief. And always looking for gold. This is why you see it with the gold, the gold color in here. Horus, Egyptian Hor, Har, Her, or Heru. In ancient Egyptian religion, a god in the form of a falcon whose right eye was the sun or morning star, representing power and quintessence, whose left eye was the moon or evening star, representing healing. And this is why you see certain images. This is why I always cover this in regards to these images that y'all see, the music, um, posters, album album art, album covers, you know what I mean? Uh, movie posters, so on and so forth. You'll see these artists or these celebrities showing you that they worship Heru or they worship the mother goddess, so on and so forth. They worship the Trinity when they do these things in regards to exposing the left eye or throwing up certain hand signs or the right eye, so on and so forth. You always see it. Or you may see it in a certain way where you, you know, you have to have that keen eye because they may show it on a certain level, you know, a surreptitious level, or they may not show it. But in most cases, you'll see it because it's heightened in these last days in regards to the esoteric understanding, Luciferianism, so on and so forth, the dark arts. He was the child of Isis and Osiris, who was conceived after the death of, of Osiris at the hands of Set. Now, we understand that Nimrod was taking a trial for the apostasy that he led against the Most High. 
and Nimrod was cut up into pieces. And that's where flagellation comes from in regards to the Egyptians, where they cut themselves up in veneration of Nimrod. That's why the Most High tell us not to cut ourselves in, in, in veneration of the dead. And we read up on Exodus. And also when you read up on Exodus, it goes into us where we basically, you know, we worship the Most High in regards to the incense. You know, we were like incense. That was based off of our worship of the Most High or a part of it because that wasn't the only way we worshiped him, but that was a part of the worship system. But um, going back to what I was reading here, he was a child of Isis and Osiris who was conceived after the death of, o of Osiris at the hands of Set. Brought up in a secret by Isis, Horus took up the battle against Set when he came of age as Heru Pakare. He was depicted as a naked infant wearing a side lock of youth with one finger held to his lips. That's supposed to represent Eros or Cupid, also representing Harpocrates, the god of silence. But the naked depiction is, is representing Cupid. This is where you see the, like the quote unquote angels. You see a naked baby and shit that's supposed to represent an angel. That's not an angel. That's supposed to represent Cupid or Eros, the son of Aphrodite, the god, the, the goddess of whoredom. You know, she was the she was the um the whore goddess, Aphrodite. And that's why um Drake, you know, he knocked up a whore. And now he has a son, Heru Pakared. You get it? And he's supposed to represent Pan. Drake is supposed to represent Pan or Osiris. You know what I mean? That's what Drake is supposed to represent. Or Kush, excuse me. Not Osiris or Kush. But just reading on, well, finishing up that, not reading on, but just looking at this, this is the hieroglyph for gold. And there's a reason why this is important for us to understand. And just going back to that whole Horus thing, um, there's a rapper named Rock Marciano from Long Island, New York. He has an album called Mount Marcy. He's heavily into the craft. He has a history with Buster Rhymes and a lot of major artists. Griselda, so on and so forth. He's like an underground legend, 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 Rock Marciano. And if you look at the track list, it's a lot of esoteric significance, a lot of meaning behind the tracks. And just showing you overtly what he's about, he has a song called The Eye of Horus. But the Horus is spelled with a W in front of the H to represent the understanding of Aphrodite. And, you know, him, I mean, her having that, having her son, Eros, because Eros is basically supposed to represent Horus or Heru. You feel what I'm saying? And the whoredom aspect of Aphrodite is all based in what you see today with these women, these female um, celebrities, so on and so forth. And just in general, with, with most of these liberal women, they take on they take on Aphrodite or, or Astarte, Asheref, so on and so forth. The same thing. Right. But Rock Marciano, he has a lot of songs on his album in which it goes into the craft or the dark arts. He has a song called The Butterfly, The Butterfly Effect. He has a song called um, Wicked Days, a song called Spirit Cooking, COVID uh, Cough, even though that's just more so, you know, these times that we're living in now, the quote unquote pandemic. But yeah, just going into how it all ties in, how it all connects, because we know what COVID is really supposed to represent if you understand, you know, the Luciferian aspect. But this is the hieroglyph for gold. And on the song, Eye of Horus, he says, I feel like Horus in all is gold. That's what Rock Marciano says. So I just thought it was very, very, you know, it was something that I should just point out. The Egyptian hieroglyph represents gold. Guarding the S12, phonetic value RB, I mean, excuse me, NB, is important due to its use in the Horus of gold name. One of the five toe titulary, or I can't pronounce that, titulary names of the Egyptian pharaoh. Horus or Heru. You know what I mean? Just going into that understanding and just going back to Kyrie Irving. All this is just based off of his practice. You know, he worships the pagan gods. He is a Buddhist. This is why you saw um, on his live with Kevin Durant, you know, he was sitting like a pretzel because he worships the Buddhism. He worships, you know, the pagan gods. He's into Hinduism, Buddhism, so on and so forth. Egyptology. That's what Kyrie is into, and he's everywhere with it. He's a very polarizing figure, very, very talented individual, but he's just very lost. You know what I mean? No disrespect, not trying to knock him or insult his intelligence. He's just very, very lost, and he needs to humble himself. But at the end of the day, man, in these last days, the Most High is going to separate people in regards to, you know, giving them the spirit to choose a side. 
And only a remnant is going to choose the righteous side anyway. So it is what it is. But I just want to thank you all for supporting the channel. And God bless you all. Peace. Shalom.